personally day in day out i'm so glad when i just get to see truth and truth just about things dealing with harry and megan coming out to light trust me you that's one thing like literally just amazes me because people judged them just from their docuseries from harry's memoir spare they brought about so many stories saying that you know what harry and megan betrayed the windsor where harry and megan betrays the parlors in the name of them just wanting to do this for the sake of clicks not knowing or probably they had forgotten that the, they made them go through a lot and they left their country so them trying to bring about this whole story of kind of Harry and Meghan trying to outshine the Sussex. It's something that doesn't, didn't start yesterday. Of they bringing about the story of Harry and Meghan trying to outshine the so-called working royals. This is something that started way back. Because they were so much jealous of the fact that Harry and Meghan were getting so much attention while still back in the UK. And uh, even Harry themselves uh, and Meghan stated if they thought by leaving the UK, things were going to change. They thought by leaving the UK, things were going to be different and that the so-called other working royals were going to get the attention that they wanted. But funny thing enough, it's like that the also after Harry and Meghan leaving the UK, there were also some other fake tablets that were also kind of also moved from the UK to wherever they are. Because the stalking, the intrusion, the trolling is still there up to date. And the byline times does things so well. I love the investigation that they brought about and uh, up to date, those so-called fake journalists have started being revealed one after the other. Karma is just knocking slowly at each of everyone's door out there. And they need to understand what they started will soon come to an end. And they better be ready to finish it. Because they started it without a plan. I love the fact that, and I'm so glad, the truth of thanks dealing with Harry and Meghan are just coming to light. That's one thing that I personally love. Somebody commented over the same and said, giving Duchess Meghan a nickname because of her toughness and her resilience hits so damn differently. Now, the resilience part was foreshadowing big time though. Because it's like Harry and Meghan had, had, had seen whatever was awaiting. It's like they had already predicted what, with what was going to come. Because trust me, you, I love the fact that they are not that that particular monarchy that particular institution a cruel one with so much hypocrites with it just to experience that because at the moment a lot of other commonwealth countries are just out here speaking about the abolishing monarchy thing people are just out here because we no longer see any relevance of them because we are expecting to see King Charles in Kenya the 31st of October. That is particular. That is on Tuesday. And even the Kenyans themselves, it was just last week on Tuesday while they were protesting, asking for justice. Because we remember what happened back in the year 2021, whereby the British, British military just kind of set a whole class on fire, whether accidentally, whether intentionally, they know best. But they had promised that people over there, people who lost their livestock, people who were injured were going to be compensated. And this is something that hasn't happened for two and a half years now. And we're expecting to see what Charles is coming to do back in Kenya. We don't know what he's bringing about. Let's just wait and see. And you know, one thing that always surprises me is that the cruel father, that is King Charles, threw his own grandson, his own son to the wolves and put their lives in danger to protect and aid all while continuing to protect his brother that paid millions to quite a man he never met. Because uh, we just come to realize, or this is something that has been obvious all throughout the years, that Charles is protecting William in so many ways. And that there are a lot of things that happen behind the bars that we know nothing about. And it's like there are journalists or there are a number of people who know about it. That's why they are being catered for for the sake of just preserving the things that William did that need to be unleashed. But they don't want the public to know. And they need to understand that things will just be out here. The same way we've started seeing things be one by one being exposed, it will just get to them. And they need to understand Harry and Meghan moved on.
It would be better if they did the same. They would have done the best thing if they just moved on in whatsoever way because they just made Ari and Megan go through a lot. And the fact that as a father, as a brother, as a monarchy, they never protected them, but instead fed them to the wolves, that was so bad. To that point where by that just Megan gives birth and the first thing they're asking is, what's the color of the baby? What's that? Like that's one thing that I would never wish to see any person experience. This tells you that the monarchy is so much racist and was never willing to accept Duchess Megan for the person she is, for her race, most especially. But they also forgot that Duchess Megan is just not any other person like cat of their own. Because she is a strong lady who understood his worth. Up to date, he knows what his worth is. And that's why there are things she doesn't entertain. She left currently out there, thriving, living her best life. And, uh, you know, it's so much when they bring about this whole story of, you know what? Duchess Megan forgets that people don't even like, are not interested in her, but people are interested in her. And then you come back and just question yourself. Weren't this the same people who keep on questioning whenever Duchess Megan is not with Harry? Because uh, we're speaking about the coronation whereby Harry went alone. and Duchess Megan stayed back to celebrate her son's birthday. Where, what were the press asking? Where is Duchess Megan? Those were some of the questions. When uh, she was let just to attend the Invictus game on some days, those were the questions that the press were questioning. Why and where and when is Duchess Megan coming? They never miss about something. So when they bring about this whole story of her not being relevant, of her not being the kind of people not interested in her, it's very ironical. Because they themselves know very well that people love Duchess Megan. People are so much into her and would do what she does. But they just come to acceptance that she's way much loved than any other wife over there. Because they forgot that Duchess Megan is no Kate. They just can't control her anyhow. Because that's one person who had already made her identity. Had already kind of just built herself even before. She was, I loved the fact that, you know what? It was just stated the other day by Roland that Duchess Megan was already a royal. Even before. Before getting married to that father. She was her own royal. Personally, I refer to her as a global queen. And yes, she is. Because whatever she has done surpasses what those local working royals eh, have ever done. They've not done even a, a quarter of what Harry and Meghan have been able to accomplish and establish for those three years that they've been away. But that's one thing that they just learned to adjust to because they thought by doing so, Harry and Meghan were going to give up. They thought by doing so, Harry and Meghan won't be able to stand back on their feet again. But Harry and Meghan are busy out here just proving them and proving them and proving them wrong. They pushed them to the wall and they just need to adjust to whatever decision that they make. Because they are truly one in a million. Out here, people just keep on appreciating them for their effort, for their love, for the impactful things that they have done and they are still doing to the society. And that, that tells you how people view them. That tells you what Harry and Meghan are made of and how people just want to kind of continue just seeing them day in, day out. Those are the future king and queens that we would love to see. They are truly the the leaders that we would love to see. Because trust me, you, they are just so amazing. Personally, I always tell myself that Harry and Meghan were so much compatible. Like they were just so much meant to be together. Because the vision, the mission that they both have, it's kind of the same. Assisting people, prioritizing people's need before theirs. Some of the things that they've prioritized, just assisting humanity, their foundations. Harry, Meghan, I can say they just a whole version of what Princess Diana was. And they've decided to continue her legacy. And that's the amazing bit of it all. I don't know what you think about this. Kindly just leave your comments down below. And that was our today's podcast. And thank you so much for tuning in. And see you guys in our next podcast.